In this video, I'm going to do some examples of somewhat more complex derivations involving MTP. So, let's see. Well, we'll show the conclusion. There's no condition. We're not trying to show a conditional, so we're not going to make a conditional assumption, so we will bring in our premises. Those are all of our premises. Uh, line 2 is a conjunction, so let's just go ahead and split it up. We're not sure if we're going to use both conjuncts yet, because we haven't really thought about the derivation, but it doesn't hurt to split it up and to split up both sides of it. So we have uh, P and we have not Q. So if we look at line 3, we have a disjunction. It's R or Q. Well, can we do MTP with it? We need negation R or negation Q. Unfortunately, we have negation Q, so we can do 3, 5, MTP. Okay. Well, it looks like our deriving, our elimination rules are done. We've, we're done with line 2, we're done with line 3, so we have 4, 5, and 6. Okay, well, what should we do? What should we do? Well, we want to get the conclusion. The conclusion is P and R. So if we can get P and R, we can box and cancel with DD, and we'll be done. So we want to think, how can we get uh, P and R? Well, we need P. Separately, we need R, and we put them together with a junction. Oh, well, that's what we have on lines 4 and 6, so we can create by applying a junction to lines 4 and 6, our conclusion, and we can box and cancel with direct derivation. So there we go. All right, let's take a look at another. So here we have the conclusion, which is Z and not Q, and here we have our three premises. So we have a disjunction on line 3 and a conditional on line 4. If we had Q, we could do MTP, but we don't have Q. If we had not not Z, we could do MT with line 4, but we don't have negation, negation Z. What about line 3? We're looking for our elimination rules at this point. Well, we would need negation Z, or we would negation, negation P. We would need negation, negation P. We don't have negation Z, and we don't have negation, negation P. So as things stand, we cannot do MTP with line 3. However, we can easily get negation, negation P by applying double negation to line 2. So now we have negation, negation P. That's what we need for MTP with line uh, 3. So we get Z. Good. We're done with line 3. We will not use it ever again. Just like uh, once you've used a conditional once with MT or MTP, once you've used a con disjunction with MTP once, you won't use it again. So now we want to think, can we use line 4? Well, if we had Q, we could do uh, MP, but we don't have Q. And we need negation, negation Z for MT with line 4. We don't have negation, negation Z, but again, we can get it easily by applying double negation to line 6. Now we have the negation of the consequent, so we have a conditional on line 4, the negation of its consequent on line 7, which gives us MT. So we're done with our inference rule applications. Elimination rules, because the only places we could apply elimination rules are lines 3 and 4, and we've done that. So either we're stuck, or we're going to need to use introduction rules. So if we look at the conclusion, the conclusion is a Z and not Q. It's a conjunction. How do we get a conjunction? We use the rule adjunction applied to each of its conjuncts. The conjuncts are Z and also not Q. So if we have Z and not Q, we can apply a junction to them to create the conjunction Z and not Q, which will let us box and cancel with direct derivation. Well, fortunately for us, we have Z on line 6 and not Q on line 8, so we can put those together, and we get Z and not Q. That is the conclusion, which makes this a direct derivation. So we'll look at just one more. So here we have our conclusion. Our first premise is S, and our second premise is T or not S. Our conclusion is T or U. Now, it's important, right, there's a difference between conjunctions and disjunctions. So when we look at that conclusion, we think, mm, probably I'm going to use an inference rule to get it. And uh, the inference rule I would use is uh, addition, because it's a disjunction. And addition says I don't need both of the disjuncts to get the disjunction. I only need one. Because remember, the disjunction is true if either disjunct is true. So once we know that one disjunct is true, we know that the whole disjunction is true. So if we have T, we can infer to T or U. And if we have U, we can infer to T or U. So what we're looking, hoping to get is T or U, and then uh, we will then apply addition. So having thought about how we're going to get the conclusion, 
We now want to see if there are any inference rules we can apply usefully. We're making no assumption because we're not trying to show a conditional. We brought in the premises, so we're, we're at the inference rule stage. So we want to, if we, if we had t, we would be done. If we had u, we, we would be done. But surveying lines 2 and 3, we see we do not have t, and we also do not have u. So we instead want to see if we can apply elimination rules. So to apply elimination rule to line 3, we would need MTP, which means we need the negation of one of the disjuncts. So we would need negation T or negation negation S. As in the previous derivations, we don't have negation negation S, but we can get it with double negation. And now we can apply MTP, which gives us line 4. We're basically done with our elimination rules because there's only one... Um, we could well, there are two places where we can apply elimination rules. Mm, three or four. We've done it with three because we did MTP with line four. We have a double negation. We could eliminate those, except we already have the double negation elimination on line two. Right, we, if you apply DNE to line four, you'll just get two back. You'll get S back. So we're done with elimination rules. So we want to ask, can we box and cancel? Not yet, because we don't have T or U. But uh, we can get T or U by applying addition to line five. We can say, I'm going to add, I can add whatever I want. I want to add u on the right, so I'll say t or z, and then I'll say, what do, what do I want to substitute for z? I want to substitute u, and there we go. That is the conclusion. So, we have a direct derivation, and we're done. I'm going to do one more derivation in a separate video, which involves thinking about the relationship between conditionals and disjunctions, but that's the last derivation for this video.